Roger Goodell's getting the snot boot out of him, the AFC East is stocking up on quarterbacks and Josh Rosen nearly spiraled out of the top 10 before the Arizona Cardinals made a move to grab him. Those are the early storylines during the first round of the NFL Draft on Thursday night. Goodell, who took the stage with Cowboys legends Roger Staubach, Troy Aikman and Jason Witten endured a tsunami of boos boo when he opened the draft and ham-handedly scolded the crowd for booing while likable people were with him. Goodell, who also seemed to take exception when NFL Network host Rich Eisen joked that the 40-yard dash he did in his office was shorter than 40 yards, has to save himself from the annual verbal vote of no confidence he hears every April. But I hope he never does. More NFL Draft, Perry's Mock Draft 4.0, Pats go for help in four different areas Meanwhile, after Baker Mayfield went first overall to the Browns, Penn State running back Saquon Barkley went to the Giants then the Jets grabbed Sam Darnold. Darnold, who had 22 turnovers in 13 games with USC last season, never started a game at USC where the starting game time temperature was lower than 56 degrees. The Browns took Ohio State corner Denzel Ward with the fourth pick before the Broncos took NC State's Bradley Chubb with the fifth pick. The first of two Notre Dame linemen taken in the top ten went sixth to the Colts, guard Quentin Nelson. That's when the Bills moved up from 12 to 7 and took Wyoming quarterback Josh Allen. The big-armed Allen has wildly varied reviews of whether or not he'll be able to bring the necessary level of accuracy to the NFL. It won't be any easier for him in windswept Buffalo. Georgia linebacker Roquan Smith will see the Patriots this season. He went to the Bears at 8. Jimmy Garoppolo gets his left tackle, Mike McGlinchey, who went 9th to San Fran. Rosen, whose expression as he kept dropping betrayed some frustration, had his slide stopped by the Cardinals who traded up to grab him at 10. Finally, another terrific safety joined the AFC East as the Dolphins grabbed Alabama safety Minka Fitzpatrick at no. 11. Isaiah Wynn and Sony Michel. Er, not the first round combo platter I was expecting. Nor was anyone else. The Patriots, in general, won't tell nobody nothing about nothing. But that's not the only reason their draft targets are almost impossible to predict. Since they are almost always picking in the latter part of the first round, they are at the mercy of the teams in front of them. And the equation changes over and over and over again to the point where we are all just doing a more educated version of the Felger. There's your disclaimer. So when I say that I like the Isaiah Wynn pick and really look forward to watching Sony Michel, don't give me the, well, why didn't you say that before the draft big nose? Watch Wynn work against Oklahoma in Alabama a few months ago. He's a precise mauler in the running game, he logs stalemate after stalemate in the passing game, he's never off balance and he finishes. Just a very good player against very good competition. Question is whether Wynn is a guard or a tackle because he's stubby for an NFL left tackle at just under 6 foot 3 with 33 and a half inch arms. Nate Solder is 6 to 8 with 35 and a half wings. Matt Light was just under 6 foot 5 and also had 33 and a half inch arms. The height and arm length matter because the initial punch delivered by an offensive lineman in pass protection should stun a rusher and keep him at bay. If the rusher has longer arms, he can minimize the impact of the punch or use a long arm or hump move to get his hands on the offensive lineman and dictate how things will go that play. Check out this fun ringer story for examples. The trade-off with Wynn is that he's got outstanding feet and power. We all agreed before the draft that offensive tackle was a need. Useful backup Ladrian Waddle and last year's third rounder, Antonio Garcia are in the mix already. So is undrafted second-year player Cole Croston. So the Patriots took a player who doesn't fit the suit but is probably a better offensive lineman than all of them. And if, for example, Garcia works out, Wynn can play guard. I did not enjoy the 2017 Joe Thune experience. He gets walked back into Tom Brady's lap far too often at left guard. Meanwhile, right guard Shaq Mason, a good player the team developed out of Georgia Tech, is in the final year of his contract and will probably be one of the best guards on the market if he chooses to go there. The Patriots traded for Trent Brown, a 2015 seventh rounder and part-time starter at left tackle, we'll see on that but it's not like he's Anthony Munoz out there. Last note on Win, he tore his labrum against Kentucky and had surgery in January but says he'll be good to go for mini camp in June. As for Michelle, who doesn't love watching ball handling talent, it's just that the Patriots have been at the forefront of MacGyvering a running game out of spare parts so spending a first rounder on a guy was, I thought, anathema to them. But the guy looks on some runs like he runs about a 3.1, he catches the ball well and he's going to be fun to watch. He's played in huge games and is a two-time captain.
Having lost Dion Lewis to free agency, Michel is a better replacement for his production than the guys on the roster. But, as I pointed out, the Patriots have nickel and dimed the position for a decade and gotten good production so when they spend a quarter there it makes you raise an eyebrow, and 5. 1. Mike Florio did a very thorough job this morning paddling the media criers that kept bugling the Patriots' great interest in Lamar Jackson. There's so much bullcrap being peddled to reporters who are under so much pressure to fill the void between free agency and the draft with news that it's really all just noise. Yes, we pass the noise along, we have to fill the void, too, but we do so by adding the caveat that, with so much smoke, it's nearly impossible to find the fire. On Thursday night, the Patriots had two cracks at Jackson, and they didn't take him. At pick 31, they opted for a running back, a running back, over a five-year commitment from the potential successor to Tom Brady. Running backs are anywhere, everywhere. Quarterbacks that may revolutionize the game while also replacing one of the best players in NFL history are hard to find. I liked the idea of Jackson. I gave credence to the idea that the Patriots might like to add the kind of player they have so much trouble stopping. But the idea that repeated meetings with Jackson were smoking gun evidence they really loved him was dense. If you like the guy, you like him. You don't keep going back to talk to him unless something's bugging you about his potential. 2. Which brings us to the amount of contact the Patriots had with Wynn and Michelle. With Wynn, it was just the combine. Everything else, obviously was researched by the Patriots scouts led by Monty Ossenfurt. Same with Michel, neither player spoke with the Patriots at the Georgia Pro Day, neither was in Foxborough for a visit. So it's all legwork. And with both players, it didn't seem like character was an issue. Michel was a two-time captain. Wynn was about the happiest, friendliest sumbitch you've ever heard on his conference call. Meanwhile, the team gets references from former teammates like center David Andrews and wide receiver Malcolm Mitchell who both played with Wynn and Michelle at Georgia. Not to mention scouting reports from SEC friendlies like Nick Saban. 3. The Patriots reportedly coveted Arkansas center Frank Ragnow who was scooped up by Detroit at number 20, making him the first pick of the Mad Patricia regime. Meanwhile, Tennessee leapt ahead of the Patriots to grab linebacker Rashawn Evans from Alabama who would have been a neat fit in New England. Two things. First, if the Patriots did chase Rag now, dot why? They have a capable center and team captain David Andrews, who is signed through 2020. I get this idea of not drafting for need and taking the best player on the board and all but win, even with his height concerns, at least projects as a two-position guy at positions of need. Second, the Bella Chicasa Rio spawn populating front offices and sidelines is a growing obstacle for the team as they chase players with similar skills. Arkansas interior lineman Frank Rag now is an under-the-radar candidate to keep in mind tonight for the Patriots, who have been all over him with Brett Bielema leading the way. Rag now looks like a late first-rounder, Jeff Howe, at Jeff Howe, April 26, 2018 4. I love football. I appreciate the men who can play it at the level they do because I've been entertained by it for 42 years and have made a living off of it for more than 20 players, especially this generation of players, understand the long-term risks and the potential for sudden catastrophic injury. All that said, watching Ryan Shazier make his way across the stage in Dallas last night, I had two thoughts. The first was, look at what this game can do to you. The second was that Shazier's presence was as much a cautionary tale for the young men being ushered into the league as it was a celebration of his rehabilitation progress. The head-lowering role the NFL swept into reality last month used the Shazier tackle as an example of what not to do on the football field because of the danger it poses to the practitioner as much as to the recipient. I'm of course happy Shazier is progressing as he is. His presence was both triumphant and wrenching. We were looking at a person who, months ago, was in the highest percentile of physical ability of anyone on the planet needing assistance to walk across a stage. This is a hell of a dangerous sport and these young men do indeed sign up for it, with an immense amount of societal pressure. That's all I have on that. 5 quarterback, safety, and a friggin' linebacker today. Stop with the, I don't know what drafting for, need means, update, 12.20 p.m., the Patriots have indeed traded for offensive tackle, Trent Brown from the San Francisco 49ers. Adam Schefter of ESPN has the details. 49ers are trading OT Trent Brown and pick number 143 overall to the New England Patriots in exchange for pick number 95 overall, per at Field Yates and Me. The deal is pending a physical, Adam Schefter, at Adam Schefter, April 27, 2018 Pro Football Talk first reported of trade talks between the teams. 
See story below, the Patriots look to bolster their offensive line by taking Georgia's Isaiah Wynn with their first pick in the draft, Thursday. Apparently, they're looking to continue to add to the O-line by talking trade with the San Francisco 49ers for offensive tackle, Brent Brown, according to Pro Football Talk. Patriots, 49ers are talking about a possible trade for San Fran OT Trent Brown, per source, Pro Football Talk, at Pro Football Talk, April 27, 2018 The 49ers made Notre Dame OT Mike McGlinchey the no. 9 overall pick on Thursday night, so Brown could be expendable. A sixth-round pick in 2015 from the University of Florida, Brown, 6 to 9, 376 pounds, had a shoulder injury that limited him to 10 starts last season after he started all 16 games in 2016.